So I'll press the gas pedal now, and a portal should open. If I had accelerated my bucket like that in my youth, I would have been the king not of the district, but of the city. 8 seconds to 60. You heard right, 8 seconds, not 14, like others like it. I want to make a reservation right away, this is according to the documents. All the figures given in the video are quite arbitrary, since this car is not quite ordinary. But it seems we are all going to die now. VAZ can't drive like that. VAZ-2108 was a promising model of the Soviet car, ministerial workers relied on it, because according to the plan, the car was supposed to return the share of the European currency market to the domestic car. In parallel, the VAZ-2109, an enlarged hatchback, and the VAZ-21099, a sedan, were developed. But for economic reasons, the eighth model was born earlier than anyone else. Yes, 2108, called the 8th. Yes, with a short wing, 1986 release. I want to remind you that the 8th began to produce from the 84th year. A rare car, and a very strange one. In the ninth model, I made a little reservation. Of course, the low panel was installed until the 90s, and their colors were, to put it mildly, strange, for example, greenish. But back to the car we're reviewing today. Here the torpedo is low, but late, because it is gray. So it was once changed, the ceiling was changed, the upholstery of the doors was changed. But the steering wheel remained old, and, pay attention, write in the comments, I don't know, the central part, an elastic band that looks like wood. It's not a plastic sticker, it's an elastic band. There is another very interesting thing, it is under the seat. Controller, 1980 of some year of publication. I can't figure it out now. Made in the USSR. This car has a lot of mysteries. Again, the interior lining is beige from the bottom, which means the car is genuine. Of course, with a few design frills, for example, like this thing. But then there were good reasons for that. Will we ever know about them? And the seats here too, early, you see? Right. First gear, 40, no roar, second, 55, just like on a trolley bus. Can you hear the engine running smoothly? I step on the gas, but the sound does not change. The engine can be turned up to 8000, but it's a pity for it. So, it is necessary to switch to the third gear, although the second one is enough, but I have to. Third gear, 75, 80. Fourth, decrease speed, and it will go, go faster but the sound is not the same. You see, as if they left half of the engine in a box at the factory.
I get on the back. A wide door is a good thing in this case. I will reveal to you a terrible secret. I have never ridden in the back seat of 2108. Haven't ridden. And thank God. But in spite of everything, the interior is roomy for four people. And the trunk is very roomy, 70 gallons by itself, and 265 with the seats folded down. From a practical point of view, the VAZ2108 was a very modern car for the beginning of the 80s. Judge for yourself, front wheel drive, max person front rack, rear beam also with a racks. Well, of course, the engine but not the one you are all expecting. So, let's move to a reduced speed. And almost nothing happens. So the gearbox cannot be braked. The car doesn't even lose speed. Therefore, we brake with the brakes, no matter how strange it may sound. From the unusual, small move, barely weaving 12 miles per hour in third gear. There are no failures, no detonation. The engine doesn't like it, but it runs. We press on the gas, grunts, grumbles, but immediately gets to work. <laughs> yes, for such a dynamic Ziguli can be forgiven for everything in the world. I have always said that a Ziguli can be taught to accelerate, but it is almost impossible to force it to slow down. The suspension of the eighth model, of course, needs to be strengthened. So rotary piston engine, please love and favor. Or not to love, because the engine is very strange, but it's not just RPE, it's RPE 414, that's why it's unique. Produced from the 1992 to the 1995 year. RPE 415, which everyone knows, turned out from it. And this is an engine, well, a little weaker than the 415th. Volume, for ease of understanding, two chambers of 40 cubic inches, power according to the vehicle passport is 90, but in reality it is more than 100, their maximum runs out at 6000 rpm, maximum torque 186 newtons at 4500, 900 rpm at idle. An interesting fact, the 414th was developed, among other things, for installation in Tavria, and work on the RPE for a fundamentally new family began to be actively carried out when the 8s were just preparing for production, in 1979. The first thing that catches your eye is that it is very small. It's like it's not there, but what's here has a huge, pot-bellied air filter cylinder and four ignition coils and four spark plugs. The motor is two section, if you add a section to it, it will become a rotor from the Volga, if one more section, it will become a rotor from an airplane. It's some high-tech Lego. RPE was invented by Felix Wankel in 1957. Attempts by the Soviet leadership to buy a license for this motor were unsuccessful, and then in 1974 a RPE laboratory was opened in the USSR in the city of Taliati. The motors that came out of the laboratory were put on cars of law enforcement agencies, and on the Volga, Chaika, Ziguli, and even on the RAF. Despite the visual complexity of the motor, it is simple. There are no intake and exhaust valves, respectively, there is no belt or timing chain. There is an eccentric shaft that acts as a crankshaft and transmits torque from the rotors that act as pistons. The rotors spin in the stators, working chambers. They are separated by housings, in which antifreeze most often circulates. One revolution of the rotor is four cycles at once. Intake, compression, ignition, exhaust. 
There are two spark plugs on the rotor, the first spark plug ignites, the second burns out. Well, I explained as best I could, I hope you understand. But the best part, with all the dynamic capabilities of the car, you can drive measuredly like a pensioner, switching all the speeds of the 5-speed gearbox to your heart's content, practice manual transmission shifting techniques, and it does not matter at what speed you are going, all speeds will work. Well, that is, you switch them because you have them, although by and large in the city you only need two of them. The main disadvantage of RPE is its short service life. The engine is unlikely to reach 60,000 miles, and some did not master even 30,000. The second is fuel consumption, 8 gallons per 100 miles. And, of course, it loves to gobble up oil, more than 5 ounces per 1,000 miles. And if the engine breaks down, in the Soviet Union it could only be repaired in Taliati. But there are more benefits. For example, the RP has an efficiency of 40%, while a conventional engine has only 20. The maximum speed of this 8th is 125 miles per hour. The light weight of the engine, and for a passenger car weighing less than a ton, this is a very good indicator. Rotary Samras went on free sale in the mid-90s. They were equipped with a gearbox from the 10th family and a slightly reinforced suspension, since 8 units could not cope with such loads. They made a splash, but a small resource played a cruel joke on the machines. To avoid all conjectures and to clarify everything, I will indicate, this car was used with the Soviet special services. This is accurate, verified information, and there are a lot of inconsistencies in this car from this.